Hey, hey, it's the Golf Kingdom, the coolest place in golf, and I am so excited for the show, not only for what we're gonna do for you guys to help your game, but we've got a new addition to the set. Check this out. It's a golf bag it's provided just for our set from Centenary College, my alma mater, not only my alma mater, the alma mater of PGA Tour champion Hal Sutton, and Damon Green, a great player and a caddy on the PJ Tour. I'm excited to have that addition to the set. Let's talk about the show. Let's bring it in here. Here's what's happening tonight. We've got our Build It segment right off the top, and I'm gonna teach you how to legally carry over 100 clubs in your bag. I'm gonna follow that up with pop culture, and we're gonna talk about your putting. Is it maybe a space odyssey? I'm gonna help you with that. Our guest segment, we're gonna bring in JoJo Gentry and her Go JoJo Go segment where she talks to LPGA star Brittany Lincecum. After that, we're gonna go inside the TaylorMade tour truck. Then we're gonna close the show with It's Just Hot Air and a special Father's Day edition of It's Time to Rise. Are you ready to go? Cause it's time to build here on The Golf Kingdom. The Golf Kingdom, brought to you by Accenture Insurance, TaylorMade and Executive Air Conditioning. Okay, it's our Build It segment, and I'm gonna to talk to you about something that might be legal by the definition of the rules of golf, but legal if you understand the best way to play the game. And it's how do you carry more than 14 clubs in your bag? You know, maybe over 100 clubs. Could you play better golf with 100 clubs in your bag? I bet you could. Let's talk about it. So my bag here on set, I've got 14 clubs in it. Now, those 14 clubs amount to 13 full swing clubs in my putter, okay? Now, Daredevil, come to the full screen here. Let's talk about how do we multiply this. So 13 clubs, full swing is 13 different shots. So if I take a full swing with this club, okay, it counts as one, I've got 13 full swing clubs. Now, here's what I want you to understand. You don't go at every swing 100%. You find a swing where you can control the stick control the face and the ball goes where you want it to go. It might feel like it's about 90%, but it's not max speed. It's only a 90% swing. So there's your 13. What that allows you to do is have a little in the tank. Let's just say, let's say I've got a seven iron in my hand. Let's say my seven iron goes 170 yards, but my yardage is like 173, 174. Well, I don't want to back off a six iron that much. So if I keep a little in the tank, I keep that 10%, I can go at this a little harder and maybe squeeze a few more, few more yards out of it. So now, instead of 13 clubs, if every club I can hit just a little bit more, a little bit farther, 13 plus 13 is, yeah, that's right, it's 26. So now I legally carry 26 clubs in my bag. Okay, so if I've got those speeds, now I'm gonna take the club and I'm gonna choke it down an inch. If I choke it down an inch, I can hit it a little shorter. So I've got 90%, I've got 100%, and now if I choke it down an inch, I, I don't hit this club as far. I might, instead of hitting it, hitting it 170, hit it only 165. Now, that means not only do I have 13 clubs at 90 and 13 clubs at full, I have 13 clubs choked down that go a little shorter. Now I'm legally carrying 39 clubs. Okay, now, how do I multiply that even more? I've got two different swing speeds and two choke downs. What if I vary the trajectory? If I move the ball back in my stance, so seven iron will be up here, kind of toward my logo. If I move the ball back in my stance and lean the shaft forward, I'll hit it lower. So all three of those, if I can hit them lower, 39 and 39 is 78. Now I'm carrying 78 clubs legally. Okay, now the question is, how do I multiply that and maybe carry 108 clubs? If I move the ball forward, I can launch it higher and farther. So I've got 90%, I've got 100%, I've got choke down, I've got the ball back. Now I move it forward and hit it higher. Instead of 79 clubs, I add another 39 to that. I've got 108 clubs I'm carrying legally when I play. If you practice that, practice choking down, varying your speeds, moving the ball position around, you get a lot of flexibility in your bag and you can play more shots and I guarantee you, you'll play better golf. 
it's pop culture time in the golf kingdom, and we're gonna work on putting. And my question for you is, as you work on your stroke, is your putting sometimes a space odyssey? Is it like 2001, a space odyssey? And I'm kind of working on my stroke here, trying to take it back, straight back, straight through. And my putter, I'm getting set up. I'm just trying to keep that face nice and still and go straight back, straight through, keeping the putter still, going on a nice straight line. That's what I'm trying to do is keep it. What are you doing, Rob? I'm sorry, Rob, but you can't putt like that. What do you mean I can't putt like that? I can take it straight back. I can come straight through, just like that. Straight back, straight through. I'm trying to keep it nice and square. I told you that wouldn't work, Rob. Goodbye. What, what do you mean it won't work? What's this hijacking of the golf kingdom here? I don't understand. I'm not moving the putter. It's, I've been told straight back, straight through. Why is that so wrong? You know, maybe I need some data to help me prove this. Let's bring some data up on the screen and talk about this straight back, straight through thing, and is it good or bad? Okay, now we brought some data up on the screen, and I want you to look at the top row, where we've got rotation change, backstroke rotation, and forward stroke rotation. This is where I'm gonna explain the straight back, straight through, and then the arc to on-plane stroke, and we're gonna see what do these look like data-wise, because sometimes you need the data to see it. Let's come back in studio here from the screen now, and, and let's come to the low shot for me, Daredevil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down an alignment stick here. And we're gonna use the stick as a straight line to show what happens. So I'm gonna hit some putts, and we're gonna bounce back and forth between the stick and the data. So I'm gonna attempt this stroke to come back straight back, straight through. So as we're looking at it, a straight back, straight through stroke would keep that black line perfectly straight over the stick, and I'd come through and keep it perfectly straight over the stick. So let's see if I can physically do that with the ball there. So as I go back, I've got to twist it and hook the face down and come through and spin it open. Let's see what I actually do when I try to keep it nice and still. Oh my gosh, that went way 5. off to the 6. left. Close. Look at my data. Okay, come back to the, the, the screen of the data here. You can see 1.5 degrees open going back and then and then on the forward stroke, I was 7.1 degrees closed for 5.6 degree closed club face. Remember, I'm trying to keep this thing still, but like I said, it's hard to keep the face dead still because that's not what your body wants to do. So come back to the big screen on me, Daredevil. So let me explain this. My body, when I bend over, bend over, my body and my shoulders don't want to make this club face stay square. Let me bring in another stick here and show you what I mean. If I bring in another one of my cool Bubba Whip sticks and I put it on my shoulders, you can watch this end. It's going to go up and down and back and forth. It doesn't go straight up and down. When I go straight up and down with that, look at my head move around. Okay? The only way to make it go straight up and down is if I bend flat to the ground. Now I've got a chance. Well, we don't putt from there. We putt in a nice posture here. So if I'm going up and down and back and forth, the putter has to do that. Let's come back down to the low level here, Daredevil, and look at this again. So once again, I'm gonna to try to keep it really still this time. I'm gonna to try to keep it straight back, straight through, and keep it still. Let's see how I do here. Okay, let's look at my data again. 2.2, Let's go to the open. data, and I was a little better that time. I was 1.4 degrees open going back, but then the forward stroke, I was 0.8 open. So if you look at the rotation change number on the left, I was 2.2 degrees open. Oh my gosh, that's not very consistent. The putter working nice and still and on plane as I go back here, come through, see if I kept it a little Zero still. There four. we go, there's Close. a good one. 6.3 open on the backstroke, 6.7 on the forward stroke for a 0.4. That's really good. If I can keep it under 0.5 or under 1.0, that's a good consistent stroke. So try as best you can, let the putter work in coming back and then square and in coming through and you won't mess things up by trying to go straight back, straight through and twist the club base all over the place. And this will certainly help your putting. You want a golf tip that will really make this game easier? Okay, here's mine. 
The fastest way to get good is by finding a great coach. And the fastest way to find that person is through GolfChannelAcademy.com. It'll match you up with the best coaches in your area. And now you can even schedule a new student assessment. So, what are you waiting for? Schedule a training session with your local coach, Rob Strano, from Strano Golf Academy in Destin, Florida at StranoGolf.com. Well, it's guest time here on the Golf Kingdom, and JoJo Gentry has her Go, JoJo Go segment. I can't wait to see who her guest is. Hey, Rob, it's a pleasure to be with you on the Golf Kingdom today. Well, it's great to have you, JoJo, and you've got Brittany Lincecum as a guest, one of the nicest players in the LPGA Tour. I can't wait to hear what you're going to talk about. The 25th year for this tournament raises money for women who are in need of mammograms or screenings free provided across the tri-state. Yeah. Um, you shared a lot about your experience with all of these women here today. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, you said that you don't practice. And we're talking <laughs> about the building blocks of your game. It's kind of a shocker. So tell them <laughs> why you don't practice when you're a pro. Yeah, you know, it's so funny that people always ask me that. And I say I don't like to practice. I just don't like to go to the driving greens, the chipping green, the putting green, like your practice facilities. I love to play. Like I would love to go out and play with these women and um, hit shots on the golf course. That's kind of where I do my practicing. But even if I'm home for a week, I'll probably play golf one time. So it's really not that much practicing. But um, everybody's different. Some girls need to practice, you know, six, seven hours a day and really grind out their game. And me, I, I go fishing. And and, and play with my new puppy. So <laughs> everyone has a different strategy and uh, this way just works for me. You mentioned that you feel like you just kind of have a gift for mm -hmm. understanding the game and having a feel for just getting out there and getting into a groove. Mm -hmm. um, how would you describe that relationship you have with this sport? Yeah, I'm super lucky. There's so many girls on tour that hate how little I, ha I have to practice to <laughs> still be good at this wonderful game. So, um, but yeah, you know, it's it just comes naturally. Uh, I've, I've had a natural talent ever since I started playing when I was nine and uh, just been super lucky with not having to practice, you know, six, seven hours a day and can kind of just go out and, and figure I'm, I'm a field player. So I just kind of feel my way around the course and uh, kind of figure it out as I go. Now you were homeschooled as a teenager, mm -hmm. and so you got to spend, I assume, a lot of time on the golf course mm -hmm. building your game. How would you describe just the building blocks of your game growing up and learning how to delve into that relationship you have with golf now? Yeah, so my dad started me with my two older brothers when I was nine and um, just fell in love with it right away. I think I like driving the golf cart more than anything, but um, just being with my family on the golf course, there was nothing better. And um, just from there, it kind of progressed where we would you know, do some junior tournaments, take one lesson or so here, here or there. And um, just over time, I just really fell in love with it more and more. We did homeschooling and then turned pro out of high school. And I've been a pro now for 15 years. So I've been super lucky and, and blessed with uh, all the talent that I've had and success, and um, it's been awesome. And you're expecting a baby girl yeah. here in just a couple months. Four months, yeah. Wow, wow. So how <laughs> exciting is it to possibly imagine that you could have, you know, the opportunity to raise a daughter mm. and potentially have the kind of success you have. Maybe yeah. not in golf or it could be out of golf. Yeah, the sky's the limit for sure. You know, we're going to put her in all kinds of sports and just kind of see what she takes a liking to. Obviously, my husband and I both play golf. We would love for her to at least play on some type of a social level. But um, obviously, if that doesn't happen, we're, we're not going to force her to do anything she doesn't want to do. But um, just the thought of having a girl or future LPGA player, it's, it's kind of cool. So we're very excited. You've been 15 years as a pro. Mm -hmm. How much longer do you envision continuing this <laughs> professional career? Well, I thought I was only going to make it about 10 years, to be honest. So we're way past that. So who knows nowadays, you know, it's uh, since getting our new commissioner, Mike Wan, a few years ago, um, there's more tournaments, there's more money, there's more exposure, TV exposure. And um, the tour is just getting bigger and better. So it's, it's going to be so hard to just walk away from. But, um, you know, my daughter will travel with us. You know, my mom and dad are going to be helpful and we have wonderful daycare on tour. So um, there's no reason to not keep playing. So we'll keep going. Awesome. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's good. All right, cool. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> JoJo, that was a great segment with Brittany Lincecum. I look forward to more Go JoJo Go from you in the future and can't wait to see what you bring our viewers next. And be sure you check out the LPJ Tour at LPGA.com. There are some great players out there, including Brittany Lincecum, who's been one of the top Americans for a long time. 
So if the LPGA Tour is coming to a town near you, be sure to go out and check out some of the best women players on the planet. Well, it's time for another Build It segment, and I've got a great drill for you to help you if you have wobbly legs. So come to the wide screen here, Daredevil. Let me explain. If you go back and this right leg is moving all over the place, you got a little bit of the stanky leg going to the top of your backswing, we're gonna calm this leg down. Simple drill, and I've got my Salt Adventure Predator shoes on, we call them, but they're the pressure shoes, and you can see my pressure moving there. Simple drill. You put down a pile of golf balls, and you stand here. Now, very carefully, you're going to step on this pile of balls, and you're going to swing back. If you do it correctly, you won't move the balls around. If your leg wobbles, you'll get the balls going all over the place. So calmly on there, watch the pressure shoes change. As I go back, I'm going to keep this nice and strong and still. And you can see the pressure shoes get real light on this side, and it gets real dark on the back leg. That trail leg stays nice and dark on that foot at the top. If you have a wandering right leg, like I said, it's a little stanky leg to the top. Do this drill. Put down a pile of balls when you're practicing, set up, swing back and stay strong in that trail leg and you find your backswing will feel really solid at the top and you'll hit better golf shots. It's time to go inside the TaylorMade Tour truck and look at the best wedges in the game with one of the best club fitters in the game. Our satellite's trying to hook up with the tour van, and we're gonna to talk to Wade Lyle, one of the best club fitters in the game, about the high toe wedges. We're looking for the satellite to connect. It looks like we're getting close to connecting with Wade in the van. It looks like we got him. Wade Lyle, you there? Hey Rob, great to be on the Golf Kingdom. Uh, let's talk some wedges here. What I have here in my hand is two wedges for the number one player in the world, Dustin Johnson. Uh, he's gonna try a couple different high toe 60s uh, as you can see they have two different cambers on the sole so what he's going to do is he's going to work with the swing coach and figure out which one's giving him his best divot which one is actually going to benefit him the most and to top that off he's using these cool black kbs 120 core s flex shafts so this week here he'll probably go ahead and hit some of these a few times and uh, see if these here are going to make his bag. Awesome stuff there Wade. Thanks for sharing Dustin Johnson's wedges with us. He's using these cool high toe wedges and the great thing about him is is the grooves they go all the way out to the toe so when you open the face which makes the sweet spot move out towards the toe you're still getting groove contact on the ball. Now, Wade is not only one of the best fitters, but you know you're great when you have your own special logo. So check out Wade's logo. He's got t-shirts in the tour van that he gives out to people, and this is his logo. It's really, really cool, and he's a great guy and a great club fitter. To get these clubs in your bag, check out these local fitting dates and make sure you get out to the course and test these clubs and get the best wedges in the game in your bag. Alexa, open Golf Kingdom. Welcome to Golf Kingdom. Here's your golf tip of the day. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. I am your host, Rob Strano, and here is today's Pro Pointer. Alexa, stop. If you want more Pro Pointers from me via your Amazon-enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day, I give you a new tip, free, with your Amazon-enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. It's time for It's Just Hot Air, where I talk about the myths and misconceptions of golf. And today is one I hear all the time in golf. And it's keep your head down to well after the ball is hit. And I see a lot of players that come to me at the academy and they're taking swings and it's like they keep their eye on the ball so long they're expecting to unearth some sort of rare mineral and make sure they spot it in their divot. Let me explain why that's a bad thing in golf and it's something that you shouldn't listen to when your friends tell it to you because it's a misconception of what you need to do at impact. So you swing through and you keep your head down as long as you can and you get in a stuck position which doesn't let you finish. The head rotation 
lets us come through and get all the way around. So if you were to lock my head on a vise and say, Rob, swing the club, I can't go through any farther than that. Now, here's the question. Everybody says, what does it matter? I've already hit the ball. Well, keeping your head still after impact back washes into your backswing. It doesn't just happen right here to here. The ability to do this and keep it still has backwashed back here. So you're already focusing on slowing things down and stopping things before you ever get to that spot, that stuck spot. What I want you to do is take a video of yourself. And if your nose is not following the golf club as it goes through, you need to get your head moving. So as you come through, let your nose follow the club and come and look for the ball up in the air. Don't keep your head down stuck in the ground and finish like this. This will help your swing and help you hit way better golf shots. This has been a myth and misconception of golf brought to you by my friends at Executive Air. Go see them for all your heating and cooling needs. And remember, some of the things your friends tell you are just hot air. It's time for everybody's favorite segment, and it's pop culture. And tonight, we're going to go back to the future to help your game. That's right. We're going to talk about time travel. You may not know it. You might already be a time traveler in golf. Let me explain this. If you're a tilter in the swing and you tilt the wrong way, you have to time travel to get the ball in the air. Let's come back here. Let me show you what I mean. I've got my stick down here. It's pointed right square at the camera. And behind me, the flag on the set is St. Clair Country Club, the course where I grew up in Belleville, Illinois. We're going to use that as a reference point for my head. Let's talk about this. When you get set up and you take a backswing, if you tilt forward, see how my head went forward of the flag? I start right here. My head goes forward and I'm tilted the wrong way. The only way I can get the ball in the air is if I time travel and go away from the golf ball going through and back up. So here's the deal. You set up, you tilt forward going the wrong way. Now, if you're athletic, the move that you should make is you shift forward and hit the ball. Look how much I'm too far ahead of the flag and look how far I've moved ahead of the stick. If I do that with a golf club in my hand and a golf ball, I tilt and move forward. Look where my hand's pointed. It's pointed there. So imagine this is the heel of the club. This is the toe. There's your typical shank. Yeah, I said it. I said the S word, shank. If you're a shanker of the ball, chances are you're tilting and moving way past it and don't have time to get the club base square. What you want to do is you want to set up, take your lead shoulder and get it to your back foot or move it behind the stick or let your head move this way, your nose towards your back foot. This will alleviate the tilt. I'm going to move over here. And now I can go forward and shift forward as I should. And see when I shift forward, I'm still right here and my hand is straight ahead. I don't have that look of being here where my hand is pointed that way. I'm back here. I'm not tilted that way. I'm here. And when I shift and turn, my hand snaps around in front of me, matching the club face. And that launches the ball forward high and straight. So back to the future. Don't be a time traveler in golf. Don't go here and then back up. You're buying time by backing up, and you're also buying yourself a basket full of bad shots. Get yourself over here and turn forward, and you won't have to go back to the future to hit the golf ball. Well, it's a special Father's Day time to rise, and one thing everybody kind of has been wondering and asking me about is, They've been saying, who's the guy on set with you here? Well, I was never going to do this show without my dad's presence. And that's a picture of my dad from a fun little thing he did at a golf show one time where they put his face on a golf magazine cover. And one thing I tell my players when they come to the academy, especially if it's a father and son, is I share this father and son story with them. And I'm going to share it with you today. When I was a tour player, I remember the last time I saw my dad. I was leaving a tour event. And it was starting to rain, and we were throwing things in the car, trying to get out of there as it was raining. And I had finished in the top five, so I had a good tournament. And I gave my dad a hug, gave him a kiss, told him I loved him, and that was the last time I saw him. A couple weeks later, I lost my dad to a heart attack. And that was, like I said, the last time I saw him. But the thing I always share with my sons and my dads is this. I would love to have one more round of golf with my dad. One more time, we could go out, share some laughs, and play. And I tell 
the boys, always remember the fun times with your dad. And I tell the dads, always enjoy the fun times with your sons because you never know when there won't be one more. So dads, always make it a great experience. When you get done with your boy, grab a candy bar, grab a soda, make it a memorable experience. And sons with your dad, always cherish that time because you never know when there may not be one more because I love to have one more Father's Day with my dad. Well, I had a blast on the Golf Kingdom today helping you with your game. This is truly the coolest place in golf where we have fun improving your game and helping you have more fun at the golf course. And for more fun, go check us out on social media where we post all kinds of cool things, even behind the scenes stuff from the show. And you can also go to golfkingdomtv.com to see extra stuff that will help you with your game. We got all kinds of great stuff we're gonna keep doing here with pop culture and build it. Remember, it's always time to build here in the Golf Kingdom. The Golf Kingdom, brought to you by Accenture Insurance, tailor-made and executive air conditioning.